welcome. We're so glad you're here today. It is no accident that you're here. God has brought you here. How he brought you here, that, that's, that's between you and God, but we're so grateful you're here. And we pray that today blesses you. Do we have an epiphany in a minute? That's why. See, I, I have a little note for myself because I always forget those things. And so the one day that I look at my note is the day that we do not have the epiphany a minute. Life is good. God is good. And I'm glad you're here. Let's rise and let's worship together, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a, with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess all my sins and duties with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good, do your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace go. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, verses 3 to 9. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. (coughs) Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, a day and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is 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 not this the fast that I choose? to loose the bonds of wickedness and to undo the straps of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. By dawns in the darkness for the upright, he is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with a man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved, he will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news, his heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady, he will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. 
The epistle reading comes from the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 to 16. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, of, spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is, in, is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do, to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never, be, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we continue singing.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our text for today is from Matthew 5, a continuation from last week. And uh, just these three images, salt, light, and law. So salt, light, and law. That's what we're going to look at. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to worship you. As we were praying before the worship service with Pastor Leland and uh, myself, praying how grateful we are to live in a country where we're free to worship and and openly at that. And Lord, uh, we know that many of our brothers and sisters throughout the world don't have that privilege for many reasons. Lord, we ask that you help us to to not only appreciate what we're doing here today, but to also keep those in mind who are suffering and struggling even to keep their own faith in Jesus Christ. So bless us, Lord, as your church. Help us do what we were meant to do so that your will might be done among us and willingly through us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Familiar text, familiar, familiar text. Now, Jesus had just finished telling his disciples Um, If you look at, it's an interesting whole passage of scripture, if you look at the, the, the people he's addressing, at the very beginning of the Beatitudes, it looks like those things are just for the disciples alone. The, the, it's not as plural, it, it, it's, just, it's just for them. And then it gets bigger, and, and when it starts to be about these things, and this is where it gets to the big stuff. And uh, Jesus has just told his people that they're different, and because they are different, If they're in his kingdom, they think differently. They start to see weakness, not just for weakness sake, but they start to see it as an inroad to where true strength is. They see suffering not as something which is horrible and a proof that what we're doing is wrong, but more an expectation of that what we're doing is right, and it's going to cause friction and suffering. Being meek, where the world wants to just shout one another down or silence another altogether. And and Jesus did all this through the the Beatitudes. And he taught his disciples how their thinking changed. I'm sure they were noticing this. As as they took in what Jesus was saying about this kingdom of grace and and light for all people. But they didn't have delusions that what they were going to do was shake Rome or, or turn over the governments of this world. These were just people that really didn't have much choice. And now Jesus is illuminating to them that, no, you're part of a bigger kingdom than all these kingdoms that try to suppress you. You can think, you can be, you can do, you can have freedom in this kingdom. And so Jesus spells it out, and now he tells us what we are to be about as his kingdom, and he uses some really interesting images, images that would be very prevalent and powerful to the people then, but I think still carry today. And so I just wanted to, that's something I do when I read a text. I, I, I look for things that seem to come out and illuminate and how many times they come out. And I just thought I would show you that. And you might have a different system, but whatever, whatever helps you, you know, mine or, or, or delve into the Bible and, and, and glean what you can from it. Um, and you can't turn aside from here what he's saying about light and and salt and law. Salt. When I was growing up, salt was white. Now, I, I don't even know what I'm getting. Sometimes There's all these exotic names for salt, and you get all that, so I just show you this. And Sometimes I don't know if it's salt, but it seems to do the same thing. It, it, it flavors. Now, there are some people, I, I'm not one, I can go probably a century with one salt shaker, because I'm, I just believe there's so much salt in food already, especially the food I buy, trust me, um, that... that I just don't need it. But I'm, I'm some, I have people around me in my life, throughout my life, who if there's not salt on the table somewhere, the, the food's just not ready. And I don't know if the chef feels like it is with ketchup for steak, but I'm thinking, what are you doing putting salt all over? But anyway, there's, there's but salt the flavors. But salt also in cooking does some really interesting things. Um, salt stops, it's, it, it stops the gluten, okay, from, um, from fermenting. 
and from things rushing to, to get, you know, bad. It, salt has the ability to preserve things. Salt also keeps harmful bacteria out of things and, and, and harmful acidity that, that can come with stuff. Not harmful, but tasteless. And it keeps that from, from overwhelming. Sugar, sugar attacks the food when it's put in there and, and salt keeps it at bay, kind of. It's like a big battle going on between salt and sugar. And salt just has this amazing property. Salt was used as fertilizer in Jesus' day. I don't know what the application is here that you're salt, but anyway, it's interesting that not too much, it, it will kill everything, but a little bit would take care of some of the weeds and get rid of it. And still parts of the world today still use salt in that way. So salt, you know, more than just being a flavor agent, has lots of powerful things. When I was up in Canada, um, salt was put on the roads when there was ice because salt eats at it. And you learned what car washes were real quick because if you don't get that salt off your car, it has the ability to love to eat through stuff. And, and, but salt is powerful. It's powerful. Jesus tells us to be salt. And, and you could take any one of those images and realize what we do. Salt also stops, as I said, it kind of slows things down. As I said, the acidity and, and the, uh, the, the uh, bacteria. As Christians, we have that ability. I want you to get out of the idea. I heard somebody once say, I, I was asking somebody if, if they would help out with the church, and they said, well, if it's a really big thing, I, maybe I can. I, I thought, a really big thing? Maybe I, that's the last time I ask you for anything, trust me. I couldn't believe what I just heard. Because the early church didn't see themselves as some big global force. The early churches, like the Church of Galatia or the Church of Corinth or those, they might have been 20 to 30 people. They didn't see themselves as this overwhelming, we're, we're going to bash in the gates. There was no crusade kind of mentality. They had a problem with the opposite mentality, people martyring themselves, saying, better to go where I'm going than to live in this. And so they would willingly go to the lion's den. We were losing great leaders in the early church because the father of the church had to step up and say, stop that. Stop that. That's not what Jesus wants. He wants us. We've got a mission. And the mission is the same. It's to be salt. It's to help bring flavor to the world, to bring joy to the world. I, 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 I joke with people, you know, that what we, I joke, but I'm also teaching. Our job as God's people is to bring joy into a world which doesn't know where joy is found, true joy. And we could do that in all sorts of little ways. It could be a kind thank you. It could be taking someone aside and saying, listen, what you did the other day was great. That was really cool. And what that does is just encourages and builds, you know. We have the three E's here, encourage and engage and enrich. But encourage, big part of Big part of being salt in the world, flavoring the world, being that person when people are talking bad about somebody, being that person that inserts, oh, well, hold on now. I, I was with the person the other day, and they did this. I, maybe we're just misunderstanding things here and taking that and diffusing it. You can do that. You don't have to do that as, as a big group or, or as some committee. Or you, you can just do that. You can forgive. If you've got a family that's unchurched and you've got a lot of unchurched people, you probably notice that the forgiveness is not rolling out of them like you would hope. You can be those people. You can be those people that forget about what happened yesterday and live for today and tomorrow. Just little things. Little things. Thank you. Please. Look, I, you know, I, 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 to this day, I don't understand why people don't use thank you and please more often. It works in my favor because I was raised to do that. And when I say it on the phone to some customer service people, I get pretty good help, I've noticed. Better than the ranting rave that I've done with cable stations through the years. <laughs> That's for sure. We're to be salt. And if we need any further encouragement, isn't that what Jesus did? When he came in the world, he brought flavor to the world. He, people were coming by the droves and thousands. They were coming out to see this one who, who they heard cures diseases and, and, and takes crippling difficulties and heals them. And, and even the rumor is he restores life, but we certainly know that he gets demons out. These were very real things to people back then and still, I think, are today. And what Jesus did was he brought 
a sense that this is not the way it needs to be. He brought flavor. Not big acts, sometimes just little acts, just little things. I had a friend uh, get in touch with me about three years ago, right when COVID started. And he said, I don't know if you remember me. They said, you and I used to play tennis together in the summer when you were out of college and you played college tennis. <laughs> don't look for it. It's not grand. It's not grand. That's why I'm a pastor. And he said, and, and he used to, he and I used to play. And one day we were working at the same sporting goods store and he had to go to a tournament. And so I I said, just go, you know, I already worked one shift. It was a sporting goods store. What am I doing? Showing people shoes and rackets? I can handle this. And he went and he won the tournament. And, and I thought nothing of it. I thought, that's cool. He and I one time went to Washington, D.C. We were about 12 minutes from D.C. We lived in Falls Church in Virginia. And uh, we went down there. And I remember talking to him about Jesus. I said, what do you know about Jesus? He said, I don't know anything about Jesus. I said, oh, yeah. And so I thought nothing. I went back to college. Three years ago, he reaches out to me. He goes, let me tell you what happened with me. He said, you need to know. And he sent me a sermon where he used my name in the sermon. Man, this is humbling. And I'm not telling you this to raise me up. Trust me, I had no clue this was going on. This is just God working through me and like he does with you. But I just want you to know how much fun this is. And so he says, here's what happened. I went to the University of Virginia as a walk-on, and I played tennis at the University of Virginia. He said, but then I, what I did was I became a Presbyterian pastor. And he goes, it was because of you. And I'm like, me? What did I do? He said, you talked to me about Jesus, and not only did you bring me to Jesus, but my whole family didn't believe in Jesus, and then they all did. And now they do. And then he told me a story of his 18-year-old son who was coming home. He was an honor student, and he was walking home, and a drive-by shooter shot him and killed him. And he said, I couldn't have gotten through that without Jesus. His son kept a diary from the age of 13 to 18, a daily diary of his walk with Jesus Christ. The father sent me that book that they bound after the son was killed so it could touch more hearts. I didn't do anything. The guy had a tennis tournament. He was in the finals. Let him play. I talked about Jesus once, and I didn't badger him. And God did all this without me knowing and God says, don't you want to be part of that? Doesn't that excite you? It excites me. Because I know God does that through you. And of my experience, which I wasn't even that intentional, and you would have thought I would have been a little more intentional going to seminary and all that, but I wasn't. I was surprised when he contacted me, as anyone could be. One at a time. Never know what it can happen. So when somebody says, I want to do something that's big, I'm thinking, who are you to claim what's big? A baby in a manger? Does that do it for you? A guy dying between two thieves? How does that do it for you? Is that big enough? What are you talking about? You do things, and we'll get to that, for the right reason. Now, we're told to be light. And I realize as I try to read and as I get older, not all lights are the same. You should think a white light bulb was a white light bulb. No, no, no. Then I'd go to Home Depot only to be confused, as confused as I am in the cereal aisle of Kroger or the coffee aisle of some super H-E-B. I don't know what light you are, but you're called to be light. And you and I are called to 
reveal this Jesus to the world around us. And people are looking at you when they know you're a Christian. And we're the worst enemies of ourselves sometimes. We're so judgmental about one another that we sometimes get lost in that to the real purpose. And the purpose is not that. Jesus gave us a real simple prayer to get us through all that. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We've learned to say it daily in many of our lives. To remind us to stop that. We're all different lights. We're all different. Pastor Leland is not Pastor Mucko. Pastor Leland is not Pastor Cosby. Pastor Mucko is not Pastor Welmer. We're all different in so many ways, just like you're all different. I would laugh sometimes when people would turn to me and go, you're not like other pastors we've met. And I'm only thinking, well, you're not like other treasurers I've met either, but I'm not going <laughs> to. What do you want me to do with that information? I mean, really, what do you want? We could be the light because God is light. Everywhere Jesus went, he revealed shadows, many of which they were trying to hide, especially the Pharisees and the scribes. Oh, they said the right things. They did the right things, but their heart was not in it. They were doing things to get a reward at the end of the day, not doing things because of the reward they already had the day before. There's a difference in how we do works as Christians. There's a difference in how we view the law. Before we were Christians, the law only has two abilities, two. It's a curb or it's a mirror. Let's go with the mirror first. The mirror reveals something about yourself. The law, the Ten Commandments, especially as they're spelled out in our Luther's Catechism, because he does a great job of explaining them and what they mean as well. Good to know. All those things, as you go through them, you realize you're not living up, which means you need a Savior. That's, that's one use of the law. The other use is how you got here today. You followed, hopefully, you followed speed limit signs, and you followed stop signs and traffic lights. They curb your behavior. That's how the law works as well. But now because of everything that Jesus has done, the law is not even to be in our minds as a way of salvation. Otherwise, we take that away from what Jesus did. We don't do the law to try to gain merit with God. We don't do the law to keep the bad things from happening. We do the law out of thanks for everything he has done. Jesus did not abolish the law. We're not under the Ten Commandments anymore. You need to know that. The Ten Commandments, are they don't serve that purpose primarily in our lives anymore. Now that Jesus has come, now we have the ability to look at the Ten Commandments as a way to love the world. The first three commandments tell us how to love God. You know? No other gods. Keep his name holy. And worship on Sabbath. You know, those three commandments, they all focus on the vertical relationship between us and God. Then you got the second table. Remember all this? Then you got the second table. And that's all the commandments that have to do with one another, how we treat one another, how we treat those in authority, you know, that we don't steal, that we don't commit adultery, that we don't slander one another or speak ill of one another. As a Christian, we look at those Ten Commandments not as, oh, again with a mirror. But now because of the Holy Spirit working in us, we look at them as, how am I to love? Oh, this told me a template of how to love. Keep within these confines and that will help me loving. The Ten Commandments are not this awesome thing which is overwhelming and holding me down, but now it's a template. Much like the Lord's Prayer is to be a template of how to pray. This is a template for how to live. Loving God, loving one another. And so all these things, salt, light, I could have gone into more light, but I'm not going to. I'll save that for another time. And then why we do the things we do. 
It all comes together in, in Jesus. And it's all unique in Jesus. Jesus also gives some warnings. Don't do your good works before others that they may see and, you know, that, that, they, that you look for a reward. Do things in the private. What I told you was not to build me up. Folks, I, 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 please, I, uh, if you knew me, you would know that's not what I was trying to do there, not at all. I was amazed that God took something like this and did what he did. And I just want you to know the possibility and the potential that's in this room to be the salt, the light, and the people that understand the law that this world needs are right here in this building. It's not going to be big what we do, but in the overall scheme, it's going to be bigger than what we even imagined. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for Jesus. Everything's different. Our sins, they don't weigh us down anymore. You took the punishment on the cross once and for all. The way we look at this world, we don't see it as the end all, and we got to fix everything in it to make sure it runs correctly, or else what else do we got? We know better. We know that this is a stopping place along the way, a gathering place where we gather as many people as we can to bring to your blessed kingdom forever and ever. And Lord, we also know how we're to do that. We're to make an impact on our culture. One thing about light, one thing about salt is a little bit causes a big difference. Thank you, Lord, that you do big differences with little bits like us. Help us be more faithful, to be more faithful in believing how you work. Help us to be more loving and gracious in why we work. And help us be thankful for what you have already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us rise. And let us join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. Please be seated. And I'll worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. If you have any prayer requests, please use one of the forms you can find in the back of the church and include that in the offerings as they are gathered. Thank you.
We have prayer requests now. This is prayer time at Epiphany. First of all, the flowers are given by Jeff and Jessica Blaylock, celebrating their daughter Riley's eighth birthday. Also, we have death in the congregation to announce. First of all, Kathleen, Kathleen Pearsall died last night around 8 o'clock. She passed into the arms of Jesus. So prayers for the peace of Jesus for her son Tom and Susan and the family. God bless them all. Also, Bernie Weibargen called and, well, she texted me first and told me that her brother, Gary Faulkner, in College Station had died and has also passed into the arms of Jesus. So prayers for Gary's wife and family. Also, when I called her back, I found her that she was in the emergency room at the hospital and that she has a blockage in her small intestine and she was still waiting on the doctor, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but... God bless her with the healing grace of Christ. Also, a prayer from Kathy McGregor for the, for the McAfoos family. A prayer of comfort and peace for the McAfoos family as they mourn the loss of their son and brother Micah, who was killed in a tragic car accident. God bless them with the peace of Jesus. For Margaret Mallon, Margaret's going to have her back surgery done on Tuesday afternoon. And so prayers for a successful procedure. May this be the last one that she needs. God bless her. God bless her in Jesus. Harvey Harrison. Harvey's fractured his left ankle. He's got his foot in a boot. And, he, and Carla's being quite the, the nurse for him. She wraps his foot every night. God bless them. And give the healing that uh, Harvey needs in Jesus' name. He's continuing to go to the doctor weekly to check on how the bones are healing. Connie Gillette's mother is still in the hospital with pneumonia, and so she needs our prayers for healing grace in Christ. Alfred Simak. Alfred had a stroke, and he's been in and out of the hospital at Memorial uh, at the Methodist, North, the Methodist Willowbrook, and then he ended up back in Kindred Hospital, and they decided he needed a pacemaker. So he went to HCA North Cyprus, and there he had a pacemaker put in on Thursday. Procedure went well, and he's doing much better as he recovers, and he needs to regain his strength. So God bless him in the healing of Jesus. Susie Strong asked for prayers. She's continuing with her foot in, her, in, a, in a book for the next three to four weeks, and her dad, Doug Patton, is doing well with therapy for the next couple of weeks. Both are doing well. They just want our prayers. Bless them with the healing grace of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Susan Dietrich is also doing well at home, and her doctor says she's well. She continues to use her walker and do her home exercises, and God bless her also with the healing grace of Christ. Ken Kessler. Ken is the brother-in-law of Chris Nutt. He's diagnosed with brain cancer, and uh, so he's continuing with his chemotherapy. God bless him with the he healing of Jesus. Fred Wemhoff. Fred is here today. God bless him. And his tumors are shrinking. He's still having side effects with his chemotherapy. And he has another dose this coming Thursday. So God bless him with less and less side effects. Pat Fleischman is here today. God bless you, Pat. She's really made a, a, a great recovery. And so God bless her and, uh, and Ed as he continues to minister to his wife. God bless them both in the healing of Jesus. Hazel Hickson. Hazel had her monthly immunotherapy, and this is going to be actually every two weeks now. So it went well, and God bless her also. Becky Brandt's mother, Marjorie Thomas, continues under hospice care, and they're maybe making a move from assisted living to a nursing home for her. So God bless them as they decide what's best for her. God bless him in Jesus. We'll go to the Lord now in prayer. Please stand with me. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your liberating word made known, especially in the light shining through the glorious cross of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that your word enlighten our hearts and minds now, that we may keep it, and bring forth the fruits of faith in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. By your light of life, rule and govern your whole church throughout the world. Let all those who proclaim your truth be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith and love be strengthened and increased in all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our country and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound everywhere. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, bringing forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who are in trouble, sickness, anguish, or any other adversity. We give to you now all whom we have named and all we give to you now from our hearts. Grant courage and strength to all who suffer for your name's sake. In every time of trouble, show yourself a present help to the Savior of all. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, hearts and minds, all our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. Help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day before the night comes when no one can work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what has been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.